Wish I would have known these five archery hacks earlier. My name is Kramer Ammons. Thank you so much for joining me today. The first one I shared in a YouTube short, but I recognize most people who watch these full form videos don't watch shorts. So I want to play that short for you right now. It's how to make your archery target last three times longer. Your archery target sucks because it no longer holds arrows. Here's how to double the life of a layered archery target. Say goodbye to the wrapping. Remove the wood, split the target, make the edges the new middle. Place your target back on the wood. Bring the wrap back over and onto the target. Now for the magic sauce. Use a ratchet strap to re-tighten the target. Add a new face to your target. This is the same bow, same arrow. Not the most beautiful target, but seriously, if you use a layered target, this trick works so good just to extend the life of the target if that's what you're looking for. Second trick is how to set a perfect knocking point without messing it up. Whether you use brass knocking points or serving thread to tie a nail knot, sometimes it can be difficult to get it in the exact location where your arrow is tuned. Because if you pinch on this brass in a spot and then realize, oh, my bow's not perfectly tuned, then you have to remove this and do another one. So this is how I solve that problem. Duct tape, painter's tape, gaff tape, any type of tape. Let's rip it into a small strip, just like that. Absolutely can be done without this, but this gives you a really good starting point. I like to start my arrow point high and then work down until it's tuned. I generally will start about a quarter inch above the center line of my arrow rest. Check this out, here's the magic. Just put the tape on right there. Now you can knock your arrow directly beneath the tape. And this allows you to shoot the bow without committing to a knocking point. Then you can slightly adjust the tape until your arrow is tuned perfectly. Once my arrow is tuned to the bow, I've got the tape on here. I'll grab my Sharpie and mark on the serving directly underneath the tape. Now I know the Sharpie mark is where I want to knock the arrow. Remove the tape, place your knock directly above the Sharpie point, crimp it on, or tie a nail knot there, whatever method you use, and you're good to go. You tuned the bow without having to fiddle with crimping these on and off and on and off. The next one's a big time saver. Sometimes I like to fletch my own arrows, but I hate waiting for the glue to dry. Now there is fast drying fletching glue, but I have found this to work even better, at least for me, which is an industrial CA glue mixed with an accelerator. The CA glue is medium viscosity, so it's real easy to apply, but this super glue doesn't cure immediately. It takes maybe 30 minutes. But when the accelerator is applied, it cures within 10 seconds. So what I do is I put the glue on the fletching itself, then I put the accelerator on the arrow, put the clamp in, Within 10 seconds, it's done, and I flip to the new arrow. I use these for woodworking, all sorts of little hobby projects. I've even used this super glue to back a bow that I built. This stuff is fantastic, and since I have it on hand, I tried it one time, and it's held up even better than a lot of the fletching glue does. I'll leave a link to these in the description. Of course, I'm sponsored. I just like these things. I probably shouldn't share this next one, but I'm going to anyways do this at your own risk. Now, I think this is kind of a hack when you get good at stringing a bow with using the leg method, especially when it's not a recurve. Recurves are a little more iffy. I would recommend a bow stringer in most cases. But if for some reason you do dare to try this, here's a couple pointers. One, don't put the tip overlay on the ground. If you put the tip overlay on the ground, it can rip it off. So I'm just gonna lay it on the right leg. Then your other leg is gonna be in the middle of the handle, right where the pressure would be when you shoot it. Other hand up at the very top, and then you can just press forward, pull back, and it's that simple. The heavier poundage bows, the harder it is, but if you're strong enough to draw the bow back, you are probably strong enough to string it and unstring it with the leg method. Warning, big warning, downsides. You can twist your limb, especially with recurves if you string it with the leg method. When stringing a recurve, it can slide to the side and be outside of the string grooves, which is very bad. It can come out of the string groove, snap back on you, and it can hurt. This is the one hack I don't recommend. But with long bows and recurves, I like to do it. The only reason I really do this is purely for speed. For example, in this video, I've already strung up four or five different bows just for B-roll, and to pull out a bow stringer every time would take a long time, whereas by learning that, it, uh, it's pretty quick. I've naturally done this method for over 10 years, and I've never damaged a bow doing it. I didn't mean to lie, but see that tip overlay? 
<laughs> this is a 100 pound bow I built four years ago and I tried to string it with a leg method and it snapped down and hit the concrete and the tip overlay broke off. I have damaged a bow with a leg method, but the normal poundage bows and the normal bows, I, I don't. Uh, but don't, recurves, just don't do it. But I save time doing it and I do it all the time, so it's kind of a hack for me. I'll leave that up to your own decision, whether you do it or not. One of the issues with having a Flemish twist bowstring is that while you store it or you transport your bow with the bowstring off your bow, if it twists a couple twists, then when you string it on the bow, your brace height's gonna be differently. What's bad with that? Well, if your brace height's differently, then your knocking point's gonna be off and your arrows aren't gonna be flying correctly. So how do you make sure after you take your string off the bow that it doesn't untwist or twist up or you accidentally just twist it once to level it up, but you twisted it in the wrong direction when you put it back on your bow. How do we avoid that? I still think there are a few different types of people when it comes to the bowstring twisting. It's like the first type of person is, let's just, it doesn't matter to me, let's just throw it in there. I'll shoot it, my arrow's flying bad, I'll twist it, I'll, I'll measure my brace height with my bow square, I'll figure it out out in the field, it doesn't really matter, and I'll figure it out. Then you've got the person who wants to keep it precise and particular every single time so that they know nothing's changed and they're good to go as soon as they put it on the bow. Because I build bows and test bows, I'm actually the first person. I use the same bowstring for 10 different bows and then everything's mixed together and I rarely ever have a specific setup that is just dialed in all the time with the same arrows because I test a wide variety of gear. So I'm always just tweaking my gear to make it fit. But I imagine if I got into tournament archery in the future, I'm gonna want this to not move at all so that I'm good to go when I go practice. I don't wanna waste any time and I'd be good to go when I go to a tournament. There's not a right and wrong, but for most of us, if we are able to spend less time fiddling with the gear and more time shooting the bow. That's a good thing. A little while ago, one, one of the customers who came into the shop showed me a specific method, a specific way they tied it up that they learned at the archery school of the Rockies that I forget, it looked very um, aesthetically pleasing. And I looked online and I can't find how the specific knot or the specific way to tie this string is. It might be pretty standard in a lot of places and I just don't know about it, but somebody leave a link to a video in the description or make a video yourself, leave it in the description or an article or something so we can figure out how to tie it properly. What I've done is one of them goes under into the middle. The other one goes through the top and holds it off like that and that holds but it's, it's ugly. So that absolutely works, but if you wanna do the same thing without having to tie it, grab a plastic clamp, cause plastic will keep it from cutting the bowstring, and just put it through the string loops. Then with the rest of the string, you don't have to do anything with it, or you can wind it up and put it in the clamp as well. Throw this in your bag or however you wanna transport it and you're good to go. When you undo it, it's on the clamp, so it didn't wind up or unwind.